Hello and welcome to Fearless DIY Music. My name is Tristan Lass and today I want to talk about making your own guitar speaker cabinet. <clears throat> now, is it as simple as building a wood box, cutting a circular hole in it, and sticking a speaker in? Well, I hate to break it to everybody, but it kind of is. Um, you can go through and look at different kinds of DIY speaker designs online. And if you want porting, you know, you could put you could put ports in the front. I choose to usually do open back cabinets, which kind of makes it uh, not that important or actually completely irrelevant to port, at least in my opinion. This is an open back cabinet. This is a 15 inch speaker. It's a Jensen, a vintage Jensen uh, 15 inch. And I built this cabinet to go with my 1965 blackface uh, showman head. Uh, because in the showroom floors back in the day, Fender would have been probably pairing that particular head with a single 15. I also had been running that head for years and years and years through a 4x12 uh, since I am no longer playing live in the kind of capacity where I would need a 4x12 cabinet. And I'm not sure anybody needs a 4x12 cabinet anymore. I decided to kind of go for like a vintage recreation. Now, I want to go through what it took to build this and what materials I used. Um, in a lot of cases, people would start this build from plywood, like really good contractor grade finished plywood. And I wouldn't disagree with that. And you'd go with three quarter inch at least. Um, if you would go to any lower than that, then you run the risk of just not having a robust enough cabinet to have decent resonance. Now, what I lucked into, and this seems to be a reoccurring theme on this channel, is that I came across some solid wood. This is old cabinetry wood, and this is solid. These are solid pieces. This is not a plywood build. These are actual solid pieces of wood that I used to make this cabinet. And if you look, it is, <laughs> I'll be wrestling with this the entire time. Uh, it is not that deep. And that is because this had come out of cabinet work and this was actually shelving in some very old hardwood cabinetry. And I really lucked out. It was all straight, it was all flat, and like I said, it's solid wood. So, anyway. Uh, so I worked with the dimensions of the wood that I had at my disposal. Another theme that it seems to be reoccurring. Finding stuff that is at hand that you can repurpose. And that's exactly what I did to make this cabinet. I came across the wood and I was like, well, I kind of don't have an excuse not to build that cabinet now, do I? So, if we look at the back, you can see it's open up here. Um, I do have, you know, pretty, pretty substantial back on it. Um, but it is an open back cabinet, which is what I was after. And... You know, like I said, it's the Jensen speaker. So let's go into what it takes to build it. If you notice that I, I did recess the front panel a little bit, and that's so if the cabinet takes a tumble, it gives an extra layer of protection to the speaker and the speaker grill, because then when it hits, it'll contact these wood edges instead of going into your speaker cone, which is not what you want to have happen. I have used this like, you know, thrown it in the back of the van and, and gone places with it. And it just adds that extra little level of both the finish work and also uh, protection for your speaker. So yeah, literally it's like the four pieces of wood, the sides, the top and the back. And the way that I constructed it is that I used glue and I used, you know, bar clamps, but I held it all together, just tacked it together using, pi I, I drilled pilot holes and then used finishing nails. But the glue is really what's holding this all together. The nails are just there for a little extra layer of security and just to hold it together during the clamping and gluing process. Then I put the, you know, front face in. And I, like I said, I recessed it about an inch to protect all of the, the good stuff in front here and use the jigsaw to cut my <clears throat> to cut my speaker opening. Put the speaker in, attached it, then put the grill cover on. On the back, 
see here if I can do this without completely. You can see, hopefully, let me just lift it up and turn it around and be awkward on camera. That's the jack. It's a piece of metal. I drilled a hole. There's a piece of metal on the back there that has the input jack bolt, uh, mounted to it. And then my wires running to my speaker. Very simple. Nothing much to that. As you've probably noticed as well, I have robust handles on it. This is where the money comes in. Obviously, you have to pay for the speaker. Even if you're using reclaimed wood or you're using relatively inexpensive wood, I strongly advise putting good handles on. I, I went for the full recess because I got a good deal on these. Um, I don't think I spent, I think I spent like 20 bucks for the set of handles. And I was like, that's, that's, that's cool enough for me to do just because it's easy to carry. I have pretty beefy casters on it. Those uh, just came from home, nah, not Home Depot, because I don't shop there, but uh, Lowe's. Lowe's is my store of choice for their big box hardware, and that's where I got the casters. The other thing I had to specialty order along with the, you know, speaker handles were the cabinet corners. You don't want to skimp on that either. It just adds that, <clears throat> once again, extra layer of strength and protection if your cabinet ends up taking a hit. Now, you can follow the same basic paradigm to build a 12 inch speaker cabinet, uh, two tens, a single 10, whatever configuration you want to, you want to use. You know, I was going for as light a weight as possible. So this has a pretty small profile for a 15 inch speaker. And I've been super happy with the way it sounds, number one. And number two, it's very robust. And it is something that I would be totally willing to take on the road and throw in the back of a van every night and not really worry about having it fail or break apart on me. Um, when you look at speaker cabinets, they are, you know, it depends on what you're buying, but they can get fairly expensive. Um, and a lot of the times, the thing that I'm most dissatisfied with on a uh, already, you know, on a manufactured cabinet is that it may not be the look or the uh, dimension, but mainly it's the dimension that bothers me on a lot of speaker cabinets. Sometimes it just seems goofy. I know that there's all sorts of acoustic engineering wizardry that goes into making a speaker cabinet um, as good as it can be. I am just a big believer in that it just needs to be really sturdy and hold the speaker. And that's about all you need. I mean, I, I don't know the science behind it, but I know that this cabinet sounds really good. And uh, other cabinets that I've built in the past have all sounded very, very good. And I just use, like I said, basic design, uh, basic construction techniques, and really just focus on making it strong and sturdy. Uh, so anyway, it's just one of those things where, you know, if you have like, l l let's just pretend, I mean, like a lot of us, we have, we have spare parts laying around. Like, let's say you bought a combo amp years ago and you're like, oh, I want to change the speaker out on that. And you've got an extra speaker laying around. Or maybe, you know, you, you just, you just happen to have a friend who's like, you know, Hey, I've got these old, you know, loudspeakers laying around or some wood. I mean, it's a fun project to do building your own, uh, building your own guitar cabinet is uh very rewarding and like i said the great part about it is is not only have you made something yourself that you can be proud of and you can make look any way that you want i mean i made mine very utilitarian this is just you know some some just you know black gloss paint and a very generic uh very generic speaker cover but it's what this is kind of the look that i go for i like this it, it, it does it screams diy but it also screams this is sturdy you know that this is a piece of quality equipment back to my point is that um making your own is cool and plus you can get the right dimension let's say you have an odd shaped head like that that 65 showman head is not a universal shape and uh any any longer uh, I found, and I've had a lot of dissatisfaction with how it sits or how it looks on particular cabinets. And the way that I built this one was to make it look, you know, right. And that's fun to do. Okay, 
I would like to thank everybody for watching. I um, appreciate all the subscriptions. They're going up. I'd like to see them go up a little bit quicker. Um, the comments have been wonderful. I appreciate all of you and really enjoy uh, interacting. It's a lot of fun. I want to want to see that continue to grow. And if you are a subscriber or if you have made it this far in the video and have hit the subscribe button, I would also really appreciate any shares and likes that you can contribute to the cause. All right. I hope you have a great day and I hope you have fun making a speaker cabinet. All right. Take care.